So you've all heard me rave time and again on this channel about the X key air, but the truth is, with all the time I was using it, I was only scratching the surface of what it could do. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the X key air's powerful companion, the X key plus app. <music> Welcome back creatives, I'm Ja Rell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I make weekly tip and tutorial videos on all things music production. If you enjoy that kind of content, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be the first to catch the next one. So yeah, all this time I've been using the X key air and only about a couple months ago did I actually stumble upon the X key plus app. And that's actually thanks to one of you guys um, for pointing it out to me. So thank you. So basically what we're going to do is just take a look at some of the actually really helpful features in the X key plus app. I'm not planning to cover everything in the app in depth because in my opinion, a lot of the things aren't really all that necessary, um, but I'll cover the most helpful things in the app. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open the X key plus app. And this is the first screen you're going to see. So once you're here, go ahead and grab your X key air, turn it on. And then you have the option here to connect to Bluetooth X key. And it should show up. So it's taking a minute to register. And this would actually be a great time to mention that I've run into a lot of bugs in this app. There's a lot of helpful things in here, but there's also a lot of random bugs, and we'll kind of talk about what those are as we go. But for now, we're gonna try to turn it back on and see if we can get this thing to connect. Let's turn on our X key air, and hopefully, there it is. There we go, now we're connected. Perfect, we are good. So let me just talk about the first bug I've been experiencing with this is when you go to register your X key air, you click register your X key and every time I've done this, you get this. <laughs> the page for whatever reason doesn't work. I would love to register my X key air. If anybody has a link to where we can do that, um, feel free to drop that in the comments. But every time I click this, it's a no-go. But not all hope is lost. Um, this presets window is where you can save presets of every setting that you've changed in here. So say you come up with a really good uh, set of changes that you want to keep, you can save a preset so that you can go back and forth between them. Um, if for whatever reason the settings you put in there really mess you up, you can press the reset to factory button. Um, another issue I'm having is every time I click check new firmware, it tells me that it has to be connected via USB and I have to disconnect the Bluetooth. So every time I've done that, um, I, I, I will disconnect the Bluetooth and plug in USB. Every time I do that, um, basically it says that there are two X key errors connected and that I can't do it, which makes no sense because I've disconnected the Bluetooth. So another issue. So registering and checking firmware, those things seem to be broken. But let's move on to some good stuff. So the first one over is the Velocity Curves tab. So this allows you to actually affect how your keys play when you play them. So um, for this purpose, I have a window of Beatmaker 3 open. All right, so we got Tines open and Beatmaker 3. Cool. Um, let's go back to the X key plus app. So this is the default curve. It's a linear curve. Basically when I play something, if I hit it harder, um, it'll get louder. So the top represents the louder portion and the bottom represents the lower portion. Um, so the linear curve is actually the one I prefer the most. It's really basic as you press it more or as you press it firmer, the sound changes. Um, you can change this curve though from linear curve, there's several user curves. Uh, we'll start with the on off curve. So this essentially removes all touch sensitivity and it sounds the same every time. No matter how hard I hit it, it will be at the same volume. You can change that volume by dragging this down. So that can be helpful for certain songs if you want to have a more even tone with whatever it is you're playing. 
Um, but I'm going to go to another one of these curves. Let's, let's just work our way backwards. User curve four. As you can see, the bottom of the curve is more drastic. So you probably can't tell, but as I press this, it takes a lot more intensity to get it to change. So um, and then another curve, we'll start, we'll try user curve three, which is pretty much the opposite. The high end now, the higher end of the volume is what is more prominent. So if I press this, it takes almost no effort to make it go to the higher and louder sound. And that's pretty much all I can get out. I can't really get out the softer tone. So anyway, you can edit those all you want. There's a bunch of different options um, and you can even draw one in yourself like so. Easy peasy. Um, what I'm going to do is reset this to default. Actually, we'll go back to linear curve. So that's another thing. Don't be freaked out if you're playing with these settings and you're afraid you're going to mess it up. Just press the reset button <laughs> so you can put it back the way it was. So I'm going to skip around a little bit and probably the most helpful tab to me is the miscellaneous tab, um, which allows you to affect the auto shutdown point. So those of you that watched my review of the X key air, you know that I mentioned the issue of the X key air shutting off on its own when it detects it isn't being used. You can actually change that setting here. So I have mine set to 30 minutes. By default, I believe it's five minutes. Um, I had it set to never for a little while, but I found that to be a problem because I was forgetting to turn it off and the battery would completely drain. So I recommend something around 30 minutes or so, so that if you leave after you're done playing it, after time passes by, it'll shut itself off. Um, so 30 minutes is what I have. And then, so the next most helpful tab is the keys assign tab. And it's a very powerful tab to do a lot of different things. I'm just gonna show you what I would use it for. So there's options for each individual key here. You can select which one um, you want to affect. And that includes the black keys. So if I were to select this, see here, I can actually change what MIDI channel that particular note is assigned to, which can be helpful if you just want to trigger pads in Beatmaker 3. You can set uh, each instrument to a certain MIDI channel, and that's a way that you can map things to your keyboard manually. You can also affect the velocity for each individual key. So just like we had the velocity curve page, this one we have just the velocity itself per key and it's a slider. You can set the maximum and the minimum. If you don't like what you did, you can always go back to reset selected to default and that'll put it back. So something I really like to use this tab for is you can select the sustain button and you can change that from push. So basically right now the default for the sustain button is if you push the button, it will sustain a note, but as soon as you let go, the sustain will stop. I can actually change that to switch, which is what I'm going to do. And you have to make sure you save modified to X key before you can actually do it. So press the sustain key and the note holds. So I could play a whole chord. And I could turn the sustain off just like that. That to me is clutch, especially for a device that doesn't have a sustain pedal option. That's super helpful. So that way you can have one, you can have both your hands free and still have sustain. So like I said, there's a ton of other things you can do in this tab, but that's what I would use it for personally. And I encourage you to dive in here and explore messing with the settings to see what works best for you. So since I changed that one key to a switch, I'm actually gonna go back and save this as a preset. So if for some reason my keyboard gets restored to defaults, I can instantly make that same change again. So I'm gonna go back to the main tab. I'm gonna click save preset and we will call it main X key format, boom. All right, there you have it, you guys. 
Hopefully this helped you X-Key Air owners get some added functionality out of your already awesome keyboard. And if you haven't seen my review of the X-Key Air, I'm gonna go ahead and link that up here as well as down in the description, check that out. Question of the day, what's your go-to MIDI controller for the iPad and why? I'm always looking for good gear to check out, so leave that in the comments down below. As always, creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.